tell me a little bit about how it was for you getting started. I actually started producing music on like a Boss 8-track recorder. I was like about 16 when I borrowed it from the high school music room. And that's when I first had insight into the basics of mixing and producing. Ever since I started working on Pro Tools from about the age of 17, I have been producing my own demos and then on my released records, been working with the co-producer to not only guide the vision of the sounds, but also jump on the computer and do it. And through that process, you're realizing, oh, I am producing this, you know, what I've done on this is what is reaching the final stage to mastering. For me, it's been this like gradual language that I've been learning, realizing that I can actually integrate it as a part of my songwriting process. As a bass line comes in, the idea for the chorus changes, and now you're rewriting the song according to the production, and you're mixing as you produce. I just try to think of it not being a separate process, but my hands, what they're doing on Pro Tools, are just as important as what I'm doing on my instruments. Does that make sense? Hi, I'm Kimbra. I'm Rachel. I'm an artist, songwriter, and producer. And I'm a sound designer, producer, and songwriter. And I'm gonna take you through how I use Neutron 3 on my new track, Secret Tapes. So I've been following your music since your first album, and this feels like a pretty different sound than all of your other stuff, but it's also really cool. So I'd love to know, when creating a song like this, where do you start? Totally, yeah. It's a song that actually was in the running for my last album, Primal Heart. Mm -hmm. It's going through the archives and felt like releasing something new while I'm preparing for my fourth album. And it's a banger, like it's the more aggressive track of all the Primal Heart um, songs. And I wrote it with another New York songwriter, amazing artist called Toth. To start with, it was actually just written on acoustic guitar. And the secret tapes concept and this idea, they won't stop playing and they're secret because they kind of feel a little disruptive and non-conventional and, you know, scary, right? Mm -hmm. So there's secret tapes. It was a big moment when the song went from like an acoustic finger picked thing to being like a raucous fuzz bass, yeah. thing, you know? And that's the fun way that production can completely change the way that the listener receives the lyric. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like when you're making music from home and you want to try and get your vision as far down the line as you can and execute it with your own skills yeah. so that you're putting your own stamp on it. Right. It worked out great that I could use some of the new Isotope software to mix this and being able to actually become acquainted with plugins that allow me to kind of get 80, maybe even 90% there myself is huge. So I can play it for you with Neutron turned off completely just to give you an idea of what I was working with. Cool. So to me, you know, all the parts are there and it's rocking, but it feels a little schizophrenic to my ears and just I don't feel like the parts are necessarily all talking to each other. And now I'll show you what it's like with the Neutron work I did. Yeah, I mean, I can hear a, awesome. yeah. a distinct change. Uh, to me, the vocals immediately were just like so much more, even just hearing the, the word secret tapes. Like I, I feel like the diction is coming through so much more obviously, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I found the song challenging to dive into from a mixing standpoint because there's a lot of like conflicting frequencies. Yeah, you definitely. know, it really revolves around this synth bass that is super distorted yeah. and quite aggressive vocals. Secret tapes that play in my head. You know, yeah. like they're shouty, they're chanty. I wanted it to have this feeling of a real girl gang, like bratty, oh. obnoxious. But then the lead vocal had to be very like cool and refined. They won't let me go. They won't let me rest in peace. So you've got these two really large dynamic spectrums, right? So I'd say like where I really started was having the drums talk to the bass because the bass is really the star of the show in this song for me. There's two basses, there's the synth bass in the song and then there's also this really cool humbucker style kind of electric bass. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, once I got the drums feeling good, I would listen back and make sure that I'm really getting that pronunciation of the kick. Because the kick is four on the floor for most of the song and it has to feel like it's our anchor, you yeah. know? Yeah. So you can see I've put Neutron on one of the snares here. So this is the more kind of crunchy top end snare. I really like to layer snares and have some of them be the kind of um, sizzle, some of them be the chunky kind of, you know, in the, the chest, body, yeah. the body, exactly. So I'd say this is the kind of sizzle snare and see I've scooped out all the bottom end. I'll go back to the chorus drums now. I have a live drum that's playing along with the program drums. Cool giving it a bit of room, a live room sound of just like a kit playing along can give some air to yeah, everything. Definitely. So that's just giving us like the cymbals are in a room and the hi-hats. The hats I found were just kind of piercing a little hard. So again, I've used Neutron here to just scoop off a little bit of that, you know, make sure that they're not too piercing because when I listen back to the first mix, because I'm working off the original mix done by John Congleton, which is hard because John's a great mixer. And so yeah. to try and improve on that, I was like, oh gosh. Although the heads are an important driving force in the song, I want it to be about the snare, you know? So the drums are feeling good. And now I want to make sure that my bass is really knocking against the drums. This is the foundation of the song. So we've got two basses running, two synth basses. The first one is, again, kind of like the snare, like the sizzle part of the bass. I really want a lot of like aggression, distortion out of it. Then the one below it is the more subby version of the bass. So I think it's actually the same synth bass octave down okay. and just providing that sort of chest frequency. So it's coming through pretty strong and we're not losing the snare. If we turn on the sub bass now, you can feel that it's not going to do too much, but it's just going to give you something that you can feel in your chest rather than hear mm -hmm. necessarily. So one of the cool things about the Neutron plugin I found is that it really helps you with that issue of masking that we've mm -hmm. talked about, where sometimes something is getting lost and you need to find the frequency that's actually muddying the, the foundation and pull it out. So with that sub bass, it was getting a little out of control at times. And sometimes it was actually so bassy that it was making other things in the mix dull. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So through a bit of trial and error, I found that around 380 hertz is where it was getting a little complex. So you can see I've just dragged that down to get rid of that frequency altogether. So on the other sub bass or synth bass, we'll say, mm -hmm. I've actually left that frequency. It's, it's now being pulled up mm -hmm. because I want more out of that synth bass. And I've also put a micro shift on the main synth bass. Now, the reason for that is I kind of want that sub sitting below it to be right here, like focused in the center, but I want the synth bass with all the top end frequency to kind of feel quite wide. Yeah, like it's just sort of happening all around you. So, you know, we've got that in a good shape and then we start to bring in the other elements like the cellos. And the guitars, which were kind of inspired by a band that I like called Ratatat, where they use like these ebos to just get these sustained chords with just one note of the guitar and it almost sounds like it's a synthesizer. Mm -hmm. So you can see they're playing three different notes that creates a harmony. So again, you've got a lot of frequencies right now that are kind of in similar range, right? And you don't want it to turn into what I call an improvised music lasagna, right? Where <laughs> everything is just on top of each other and there's no room and the sauce is just getting, you know, <laughs> I like to think about food when it comes to mixing because it's a good visual image for yeah. things getting, you know, up in each other's grill. So with these guitars, it was important to, first of all, focus on panning. If you've got everything in the center, there's just no differentiation. Each of these guitars is panned super hard off in one center. I did the same technique with the snare and the bass where 
one of the guitars is acting as the exciter and the bottom end is all being shaved out. Then the middle one has got a little more of that mid-range. So if we just isolate that. Back to the first one, which was a lot of top end. Really get the sizzle out of that, right? And then the bottom one, I think I left this one just kind of... So it's in unison with the first one, so it's a little bit more balanced overall. And by doing this, it just means that these three guitars aren't all sitting in the exact same space. You know, they've kind of all got their own spot in the mix and they've got their own purpose. Yeah. And then they're also panned out, so they're not going to get too gelled in with this cello. Now, we don't want to pan everything hard left and right, right because then we get the same problem. So the cellos are about halfway panned to the side. So now we've got like a picture forming. We've got the cellos, the guitars, the bass synths, the drums, and it's starting to come together. It's starting to feel good. I've also got compression over the master at this point. You know, I want to make sure that I'm hearing everything back with a certain amount of compression that's keeping things glued. At this point, we haven't touched the vocals and we haven't looked at them. And I think that's always the best way to work doing your own mixes from home. You want to get the track banging and like you're hearing everything you want to hear before you turn on any vocals. A good trick that a friend taught me is to set up VCA masters when you're working this way, which is something I never used to do. But basically you set up a VCA master that has all of the instruments here. So I've labeled it all instruments. Mm -hmm. And then a VCA master of all vocals, which is just vocals. So this allows for me to just solo the instrumental and then just solo the vocals. It seems really simple, but I actually never used to work that way. The secret tapes that play in my head Tell me everything is good and that I'm a god And this just makes it easy if we want to get a sense of where they're sitting and of course use automation to bring up all the vocals. So instead of going through and doing each channel with, you know, it allows for me to just do a big automation on all the vocals at one time, which has been <laughs> really helpful. So I don't know about you, but like as a vocalist, my favorite part of mixing is always the vocals and I try to save it for last because I feel like that's just where it's my creative playground kind of. Like, totally. Is that the same for you? Yeah, it is. And it kind of, it's the chance where you get to make the really important decisions, mm -hmm. you know, like putting a distortion on a vocal or the choice of reverb and how long it'll be can change the mix entirely, right? It yeah. can take it from being super dry and punk rock to being like ethereal and kind of sexy. Mm -hmm. If we listen back to just the verse, we can get a sense of just how dynamic this song is because it starts in a very low register of my voice and then shoots up to some of the highest register. <laughs> so it requires a lot of um, tweaking to yeah. make it sound fluid. They won't let me go. They won't let me rest in peace. Are you my endorphin or my enemy? Another thing that's on the lead vocal is a slight delay, and I really like to use Echo Boy for that. They won't let me rest in peace. It's just kind of giving it a little bit of air around the lead. I tried to shake you off like a bad night. There's no use putting up a fight. Secret tapes that play in my head. Filled with sunshine and candy stores on so you can see the tonality in the chorus becomes very like like a chest voice, like very pronounced and pushed out. Whereas the verses are, they won't let me go, they won't let me, but almost jazzy and sort of yeah. liquid, you know? Yeah. So we want to make sure we're compressing because if we're not compressing, then that's going to get so dynamic. So I'm using Neutron to do that. I don't think I'm compressing it too hard. I used Mix Assistant for the main vocal because I just wanted it to give me a bit of an idea of like a starting point. So I made sure I had the track sounding really dope and then played the lead vocal alongside the instrumental to get the mix assistant to kind of listen and make some suggestions of where the vocal could sit, both level wise and also just, you know, what kind of EQ might sound good against this mix. So I used the track enhance and I'm soloed on the lead vocal. I want them up front, of course, so the style is selected as up front. Intensity, for this kind of song, I kind of want the intensity to be high, you know? It's kind of like a raucous performance. And then, of course, you can use auto-detect, or in this case, I just selected it as vocals so it knows what we're listening to. 
yeah, waiting for you to play audio. And then I just select probably a point in the song where I'm going to get a series of dynamics. Okay. So a bit of the verse, a bit of the chorus. Hey, Jester, you like a knife? Your mouth off, then rely. I tried to shake you off like a bad night. There's no use putting up a fight. Cool. So you could hear it, right? Even yeah. as we were listening, it was making little adjustments. Yeah. And to me, this sounds pretty good. You know, I was listening to what it was doing, so I'm going to press accept. But I might listen back and think, you know, there's some things I would actually tweak in here. Are you my dolphin or my enemy? Let's see what it's doing on the EQ. Yep, it's giving me a lot of top end, which is a choice. Not everyone likes really pop vocals that are shiny. But actually, I'm listening back and I think... That's actually kind of cool for this song. I like yeah. that it's so present, you know, Me and the, the bass is so dark and the voice is really like bright. So, you know, I'd leave that as it is. I can see that it's scooping out 250 hertz, which you'll find it's a kind of a muddy frequency for a lot of the vocals. So it's smart, you know, it's, it's, it's taken out that frequency. That's what I would have done. The compressor, okay, it's hitting reasonably hard. I'm happy with that. The exciter, let's have a listen to the difference, you know, if we yeah. bypass that. Are you my endorphin or my enemy? Hey, Jester, you like a knife? Your mouth off. It's doing a lot, actually. I feel like that's really giving it some kind of extra danger. I want it to feel kind of a little ominous, you know? Yeah. So it's really important that the vocals have that sense of like kind of creeping up on you. Yeah. <laughs> so if we jump to the chorus now, it's not really a lead vocal for this chorus, it's all about the gang. Yeah. So I have to turn on the other vocals to give you the full experience. The chorus has a lot of instruments, that fuzz bass comes in, so at that point I wanted to make sure they're all turning up, <laughs> so to speak. But you can see in the automation I have bumped up all of the girls in the chorus. The same way that you love doing the lead vocals, I love mixing background, background vocals. vocals yeah. yeah, And you can probably tell from my records, like it's a big part of how I form a composition. Yeah, is, yeah you know. Same with me. Totally. Yeah. It's so much fun yeah. because you can use your voice as an instrument for a synth pad or whatever. Yeah. So I like to think visually when it comes to lead and backgrounds. To me, these are the two main background vocalists. Mm -hmm. So if they're standing on the stage, like they're right by Whitney Houston. She's in front and these are bang, bang, right? Yeah. They're, 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 they're her main girls. Yeah. The secret tapes that play in my head Tell me everything is good and that I'm a god Then we get the ones that kind of have soft soprano voices that are doing like the whispery R&B thing and maybe they're standing a bit further back. They're panned a little differently. Okay. So if you think of lead singer here, our two girls are panned off reasonably wide and then our whispery R&B girls are a little softer. They're hard, hard pen. Take a taste I play in my head Fill with sunshine and candy stores on Cape Cod And they're also reverby, which is the first time we've ever heard reverb really in this mix. I didn't want to use a lot of reverb. I wanted it to be like a smack in the face. But in the chorus, you do want a little bit of femininity to those vocals. Yeah. And I th always think of reverb as a way to make something fem feminine. So I'm using Valhalla on here. It's not too much. I mean, there's a bit of pre-delay, one second decay, about 20% of the mix. It's just giving them a little bit of juice, right? Neutron is also doing a lot on these vocals. And I don't know why I didn't use Mix Assistant. I guess I was like interested in the presets. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, let's see what the presets have got. So I went into the presets and I found the female background vocals preset, which was actually exactly what I needed quite a boost on the top end, you know, because backgrounds, usually you don't want them to be too upfront. You want yeah. them to just kind of be like a whisper track, scooping a lot of bottom end out, which is good yeah. when we get too much bottom end and stacks of vocals, it gets so, <laughs> you know, like a puddle of mud. So this is a great starting point. This compression that I'm happy with. And I think I basically used that same female background setting on all of these stacks. So that's four backgrounds right now. Then we've got a fifth then we've got some low octaves, so we're getting into the sixth or seventh background vocal now. These girls are just singing a straight octave. So they're in a different 
tonality, so we want to make sure they're not muddy because we're singing really low. So I've scooped a lot of the bottom end out there. There's an exciter. I love low octaves to really cut. I mean, maybe this is my influence from Prince, but the way that he does background vocals have always inspired me. They're never safe. Whenever he has a background come in, they're always like, whoa, you know? And yes. this is sometimes even louder than the main vocal, you know? And so these low octaves are supposed to be pretty gnarly sounding. The secret tapes that play in my head. So that's about seven background vocals, which is, trust me, that's, that's really good for me. Yeah. Usually I'm in those sort of more 70 to 100. So yeah, same. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like proud of myself on this one. <laughs> And then if we go to the kind of post tag, there's a bunch of vocals that come in here. So on these vocals, because they have such a shouty quality, I think Neutron is actually giving them a slight distortion with the exciter. So I love how you can choose retro style, tape, warm, or tube. Tube is definitely the vibey one. And it's pretty high up on the mix. It's just making that vocal stand out from the chorus. We're coming out of the chorus and now I want it to be a different sound, right? If we jump over to the bridge, everything gets a lot more ethereal. <laughs> Harmony is starting to come in. kind of going for a sort of Beach Boys style arrangement there mm -hmm. where there's just a lot of new sounds coming in, being treated in a different way so that it feels like a new scene change in the song. In this section, you flipped like the lead vocal is like very distorted in the background, whereas the background vocals are very smooth. Exactly. I definitely tried to make it feel like an inversion, right? Yeah, so that's awesome. That main vocal is running through a super heavy Devil Lock Deluxe, one of my favorite plugins where you can just crunch it up, you can crush it up. And then Neutron is also contributing to that distortion sound. The exciter is cranking as well. So if we just listen to that in isolation. Right out in the black night, reformation, it clears that. Set sail, I'm checking out, change away there. I guess the effect here is going for that kind of telephone style. And the great thing about Neutron is it allows you to go to that preset. Okay, vocal telephone effect, perfect. <laughs> you know, or a Vox loudspeaker. Really, really helpful for someone who's just kind of getting used to mixing their own demos to have these starting points mm -hmm. and then use your own ears to tweak it. As we ramp up to the last chorus, a bunch of new backing vocals are added. So it, I wanted to feel like a girl gang and a, like a bunch of new girls joined the fight, you know, and they're yeah. just singing along. So yeah, I'll isolate for you the new vocals that come in. They're pretty rowdy, like they're not too polished in this song. Mm -hmm. Just keep it feeling like loose and kind of aggravated yeah. and yes. The secret tapes that play in my head. Sunshine and candy stores on Cape Cod. So they're a little secret tapes. They're kind of intoxicated sounding. Yeah, exactly. Secret tapes that play in my head. So yeah, I almost wanted the lead singer to feel like she's wrestling with yeah. the tapes. That she, there's a war going on in the song, right? I mean, the song is all about these secret mm -hmm. tapes that play in my head. These these kind of repetitive mantras that go round and round that are sometimes for good and sometimes just destructive. And I wanted it to feel like there were voices coming out of the mix that almost emulated that, that feeling of these playing tapes that just won't stop and these voices that almost, you know, jump out of nowhere. This particular BV that's got, <laughs> wow, a really heavy EQ going on where it's just that speaker box type thing. A lot of exciter, look, full exciter and on the retro setting, so it's all the way up. It's also got a little echo boy on it, so it's kind of going to have this lingering effect. Mm -hmm. good night, good night. And then below that, I have a, another double to that, which is just all reverb. Good night, good night. And it's been octave down, yeah, so you're just getting that space around it. What did you use for the pitch shifting on that? Oh man, I always use the same pitch shifter, just like the Pro Tools in Audio Suite. Just, cool. yeah, I do love pitch shift actually. I've used it a lot on my records to get a kind of otherworldly effect. I wanted it to also feel claustrophobic. 
Yeah, I get that sense when I listen to this, but it's not in like a bad way. It's very apparent that this was like a creative choice to just like hit you in the face with this song. You're right that like claustrophobic can sometimes be a bad thing when it comes to mixing. But then at the same time, like if it's a conscious, intentional choice, at some points in the song, you might want the listener to feel a little suffocated yeah. because then that gives you the chance that in the bridge, you can, ah, the Beach Boys harmonies come in and it can, you've got some contrast to work with. And that's the important thing. So the start of the bridge features this huge arp. I can play it to you before I treated it with Neutron. I kind of just wanted more excitement from it. I remember thinking it could be a little bit more of a lead star. Mm -hmm. It's sort of in there, but it's getting buried. And I remember I started off with a preset and it used the sculptor setting to really create almost like a chime. I mean, you can see here it's treating it like symbols. Mm -hmm. So it's almost making it into this like sizzling um, high cymbal crash. And on the EQ, it's scooping out some frequencies, but it is adding top end. It's using the transient shaper and the exciter, really cranking up the exciter on the tube setting. So this is what it sounds like with all of that on. With out. And on. So I was just so pumped on that. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, definitely and yeah. pops out in the mix a lot more. Totally. And just feels like we've really gone to like a new scene in the film, you know. The bass line changes in this last chorus. So again, you have to be like careful to make sure that the decisions you're making are speaking to that change mm -hmm. in the composition. These new guitars come in too. So there's a lot of things to balance in the last chorus. Secret tapes that play in my head Until the sunshine and candy stores on Cape Cod Secret tapes that play in my head Tell me everything is good and I'm gone And the kick pattern becomes more chaotic. A lot of things to balance now, and that meant that I had to do a little bit of carving on some of the vocals just to make sure it wasn't just becoming lasagna, like I said. I found it really encouraging to give this mix a shot. I guess I've always made the assumption that mixing is something left to other people and you have to be a professional mixer to do it. But when I look back at my process, having a tool like Neutron that gives me access to all of those palettes that a professional mixer would have access to and get a starting point, you know, have that encouragement of if you're getting lost in the mix and you're like, ah, I don't know where this cello should sit. You can have this tool that's like, let me give you an idea. <laughs> I find that really encouraging for someone who's learning how to integrate it into their tool set. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes me think that I can give it a shot now. Like even if I am still working with a professional mixer for my next record, like how cool that I can deliver a demo where I'm like, I've mixed this to my best ability. Now you make it better. 